in the point championship. In fact, for Ravel, that could eliminate one of his biggest challengers, former champion Jesse Maurer. Yeah. As we're going to look. look. The entire car off the ground there, Mike. And you see his head I'm snapping. The Hans device usually can prevent that. Just going to guess that he's wearing a neck brace, right. not a Hans. And we're trying it again. Complete restart. Devin Heron, the number nine car. Car in the wall. Early turns. leader. One and, and we're two. back to yellow. Yep. Struggling to get this one going. Kyle 19. Hanley. Yeah, that should be Kyle Hanley, the number 19. KDL Graphics, Crystal Spring, number 19. I'm talking to the safety worker over there, track official. I take a look at those point standings real quick because we just talked about how close they were. And coming into tonight, David Ravel sat atop the point standings, a 13 point advantage over Jesse Mauer. Now Cody's race is right there. Drace will probably go to second tonight and could cut into Ravel's lead. But with only 17 cars scheduled to take the green, it's not going to be hard for Ravel to get into a position to make sure he still leaves here tonight, the point leader. Yeah, I think the big swap, Mike, will be Cody Drace jumping over Jesse Maurer and into second spot. Cody only nine points behind Jesse when the evening began. Could be a good night for Brett Havoc or two to try to close in on Maurer. Game ground and, and possibly work himself into a top three position in the point chase. Season's winding down. It's hard to believe. Yeah. And, and that's racing tonight, obviously, for, for uh, points for these guys and gals. Next week, August the 28th, another points night. Labor Day, we mentioned the two-day Labor Day shootout. No points to worry about for the shootout. And then we round out our 2010 campaign September 11th and September the 18th. Full point paying events. So really just three after tonight, yeah. three more point shows. And that's what I meant when I said yeah. that's probably the end for Mauer's chances at a championship. It's going to be tough now. And that means yep. Cody Drace will move into second tonight. His opportunity is going to be tonight to make the move and try to get into a position right. to win the championship. And yeah, they've Cody worked, could still have a shot. They've worked hard to do that this year. Yes, they have. Green flag again. They're going to go four wall, four, maybe five wide, and that's not going to work. And that's what we've been talking about. Wow. Because, and I, I don't want to sound rude by saying this, but there's absolutely no patience on these starts. Everybody's going for everything at the drop of the green flag and kind of seeing how it's working out right now. Yeah, not well. No. <laughs> that's how it's no, working not out. Not at all. Not well. And oddly enough, the 600s had the most cars in their feature, 20, 25 and they had the least amount of green flag accidents. And here you're going to see it. Yeah, watch, watch them line up there, spread out. Shane Braxton went to the inside. Yoder and Groob and Wilson made it four wide, and then Wilson and yeah. Groob got hooked. And Here we go. Braxton turns left, goes to the inside. And, and But that's not no, Yoder no, and some no. of the others got shoved down into the Braxton's Basically, car. they just ran out of, of room there. Yeah. Braxton saw his opportunity to drive by everybody on the inside as they were already banging wheels. That was probably the safest place for him to be, and he still ended up getting turned around. Only because, and I saw it on the one replay, he caught some of those infield tires. He was wow. all by himself. Caught a couple of the infield tires in turn one, and that's what got him turned around. There's Ryan Wilson, two-time feature winner this year in car number seven. And for Wilson, to talk to him earlier, he said it's so frustrating right now in this 125. He flipped the other week, and they're working so hard in that 600 to be in the point championship. And kind of just shows frustration is not going to end. There they go, four wide. And Cody Drace just sneaks through yeah, he that. Did. He's weaving, and, and as he turns down the track, there's Shane Braxton spun in the 35. The way it's gone so far, still 25 laps to go, and if we keep it up at this rate, it'll be a, an elimination race. So. I believe they will give them one more shot at a double file restart. No, it's single file. Oh, no, they've there. already made that call. Yep, okay. They've got the cone yep, out. You're right. No single more of file. that four wide stuff. <laughs> Fun to watch. But <laughs> yeah. Sure, Devin Harren's okay with that. Yeah. Harren is, well, will be. 
the pole sitter now. The first car by the cone. Curtis R. Miller, impressive rookie in the 7R. Starting oh, second. Oh, and there goes Brad Brown around. He Fe tried to dive in under Jared Ash in the 93. Feature winner last Saturday night, Bradley Brown. And, uh, Brown got in there, and it almost looked like Ash saw him and got a little spooked and went to drive up the track. And Brown ended up catching the tire and going around. What a really nice break for Jared Ash. Speaking of Jared Ash, yeah. of course he's a rookie in our 250 cc four stroke class this year. And we've seen him make just tremendous strides in that class. And he saw a good opportunity there. Gary Gorski yeah. gave him the option to drive the 93 car and we're going to see on the replay Brown trying to get to the inside of Ash catches those tires and you can see him going around yeah. at the left side of the screen as the field flashes by the green flag. Well Cody Drace was to start eighth in this one. He'll start fifth with zero laps in. Not bad. No. Advanced three spots. Didn't complete a lap. Back to green now. One car slow, not getting up to speed. That's the 31 Kalen oh, Petras. Oh, Dave, Dave Groob. Wow. That was a wild flip at the exit of the corner. And that Shane Braxton swerved up to miss the 31 car yeah. that didn't take off. And Groob was coming on the outside. Basically, what happened there, Ryan Wilson got a great run on the top. Dave Groob tried to follow him and caught Braxton's right rear tire. And uh, I don't know about you, Barry, but that's probably the closest I've ever seen anybody to clearing that clearing fence over the there fence. at the exit right. of the turn, too. Yep, good point. Tough break, and, and you and I were both keeping a close eye. We saw that whole thing develop because the 31, oh, yeah, wow. look at that tumble into the fence. You know what? Amazingly, it doesn't look like it and there you really can hurt see. the wing too badly. Braxton gets behind yeah. the 31, yep. has nowhere to go. Group saw the seven of Wilson going on the outside, and oh wow! This barrel wow. rolled right into the catch fence. Catch fence doing its job, yeah. certainly. Yeah, that was an excellent, excellent camera shot there because you can see how close he was to going out. Right. Number one, and, and how good of a job the catch fence actually did there of keeping him in the park. Can he and this, this is the amazing part. Yeah. Back on all four wheels. Doesn't even have a flat tire. Engine refires. We, we noted not a whole lot of wing damage. There he goes up and over Shane Braxton's right rear wheel. Really, he doesn't damage anything. He does most no. of his spinning in the air. Yeah. The, the belly pan <laughs> hits the, the fence. He lands real hard on that right rear, but it looked right. like it landed at a good position. No, they stop it now. Yeah, that's a, an example or we have the man contracting replay of the race. Yeah. And uh, we've we've talked about it a few times about, you know, some of these guys have to call the man for the pan to take their car home. And I really thought that was going to be Dave Proof's option there. Yeah, he doesn't need the man, but he needs some help. He needs the hook. He saw that group signaling that, that he's going to need a tow to and it, it just shows back to the pit area. It just shows the psychological. The makeup the, the, of the part. Yeah, yeah, the part right. that people don't realize. Mm -hmm. you, know, you think, well, I drive down the road that fast. Yeah, but you're not four wide on the road, inches apart from each other, knowing that you got to make a sharp left in a matter of two or three seconds. There's just uh, there's a, a whole different mentality to the people that can climb behind the wheel of these race cars. And the injury factors there. Whether yeah. they're racing here or it is. We're NASCAR. We're going to take another, another look at it here, Mike. And the safety equipment's come a long way, and here's a perfect example. I think every tire that Dave Group has on that car hit something. Yeah. And the wing, the, the left side wing panel actually looked like it rolled, you know, contacted the track as the car was rolling over. But it didn't hurt it. We're ready to go back to green. Single file restart. One more time. Getting close. They'll make their way through the corner. And lap number one gets in, but barely. They oh, recipe yeah. for a wreck at the back there. We, we've heard it said, you know, many of the NASCAR telecasts, you know, they're wrecking. We just haven't seen the yellow yet. They're trying to wreck. Sonny Schweitzer in trouble in the number 90. 
Curtis. Cody Drace now by Devin Heron for second spot. Curtis R. Miller's out front, Drace into second, and Cody Drace has got to be hungry. He knows that this is his opportunity. If he can win tonight, it's going to carry momentum into next week. It's going to give him a shot. Gravel trying to work his way through the traffic. He's to the inside of Hallbecker. He's going to push up. Hallbecker almost into the fence. There goes Braxton diving to the inside of Ravel. Patience has to be shown here by the point leader as he tries to pass Hallbecker. He'll finally clear him and now set his sights on the rest of the field in front of him. Oh, oh Ravel, what a move to get around Jared, Jared Esch. Esch. Yeah, but Looked I think like in, Esch missed a shift. In doing so, Ravel lost his momentum, and that allows Shane Braxton to wheel down to the inside. There in the 35, you see them running wheel to wheel. Now Braxton, well, we thought he was going to clear Ravel. There he goes. Grabs the spot. It's, uh, it's kind of no hold bar racing, really no is. matter where you look on the speedway. Cody Drace has thrown out the hook, and he is reeling in the race leader. But a got, great run for Curtis Miller. Oh, got to be impressed with this kid from Merchtown. Oh, he gets a little bit wide off turn four. He's, he's a tiny kid. Yeah. And... Uh, Wheeling one of these cars right now, we're nine laps into this run. Eventually, you would think that's going to wear on him. He's got to be holding that steering wheel so tight, hitting that <laughs> shifter with everything he's got because he's the race leader. He's pushing. Wow, does he get a great run off turn number two? I thought he was running up a little bit too high. Oh, and he does not want to see this. Caution. Yellow flag is out with 11 laps complete. The 23, Bradley Brown in trouble once again. Now in turn two, you see Bradley gesturing to one of the other drivers. Evidently, Bradley feels he had a little bit of help getting spun out there. Should be able to restart. Here with 14 laps remaining. Curtis R. Miller, the 7R, race leader. Most assuredly did not want to see this yellow. He had Will had his rhythm going. He had his momentum. It'll give him a chance to catch up. his breath. I think that's going to be a big yeah. part of it. We are uh, checking. Yeah, you see a lot of the cars using a wider, bigger wing. Now I think probably a little bit, maybe older style on the number nine, driven by Devin Heron. And it, it is funny looking at all the different styles of wings that are on these cars. Uh, some of them wider, some of them thinner, some of them with a smaller side panel than others. Uh, some of them have a different cut on the side panel. Every one of them different variations trying to gain an advantage. Field getting the one to go signal now will be green flag racing next time by Curtis R. Miller, the race leader. Two laps shy of the halfway point. 88 of Cody Drace will restart second. 35 of Shane Braxton watching we watching him come through some heavy traffic. Drace Braxton goes right to the third. attack. I kind of wonder if something might be going wrong on the 88. He slowed a little bit. He goes right forward on the restart. But then again, it looks like he's right up to power. Car pushes. Here comes Braxton. Oh, three wide for the lead. Coming for halfway. And that kid in the 7R, boy, yeah, he does not get out of the throttle. Give him credit. He you was bet. not shaken there. He's going to get pushed out now. Braxton diving in under Drace. Cody Drace is racing for a championship. Shane Braxton just looking for the win. Yeah, Braxton gave one away last Saturday night when he bounced off the guardrail while he enjoyed a healthy lead late in the race. So you know he, he's out for some revenge. Ravel coming tonight. for it up to fourth. He's looking to make up some ground. Braxton's changing his line to try to get a run on Cody Drace. Braxton got a good run. Oh, Miller's in the wall. Ravel yeah, slid he up got into in, the guardrail. Into him, and he ends up in the wall. And that's going to bring out the yellow with eight laps left to run. 
That's in this 125 cc main event. Curtis Miller running third after the leading. He did lead the first half of the event, yeah, I believe. Yeah, he did. And we're going to see it here. Braxton looking to get under Cody Drace. Drace is doing the same to Miller, and there they are, three wide. And Braxton really gets back in the gas quick to get yeah, back to, to Drace's inside. Now, if we can stay with this, you're going to see him stack up again, and Curtis Miller's is okay. <laughs> I'm a little bit too high in the track now. I'll, I'll slow down a little bit. Terrific action, though. For the lead, three wide, can't beat it. Chains off the 7R after hitting the wall. Tough break. Curtis R. Miller, rookie. And roll to the infield. We talked about Labor Day. That's coming up. You can catch all the rest of the racing action here at the Clyde by checking out LancoMicroSprint.com. Find the remainder of the schedule along with the point standings. Those